Today's video is entitled Mass on a Spring, and we're going to look at the factors that affect the period for a mass that is oscillating on a spring. And of course, this also comes under the title of Simple Harmonic Motion. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my analytics on YouTube, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Click the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning material that you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website. Whether you're looking for some notes, practice problems, examples, online simulations, you can find all that at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And of course, I made a bunch of other videos for this topic, the link is in the upper right-hand corner of this video. This is Springs, and in this video, we are going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Simulations. They're out of the University of Colorado Boulder. There's their website. Check it out. Support them. They have excellent simulations for science and math, and everything that we go over in this video applies to springs that are oscillating, whether they're oscillating vertically or they're oscillating horizontally like that. Okay. So we're going to be talking about springs, the period of the spring. There's a few terms that you should be aware of for this video, and let's just go through those quickly. That's the period. That's the symbol T, time. It's the time it takes for the spring to complete one cycle. So if this spring was to go up and down and come back to the same place, that would be um, the time it takes to do that would be the period. And a cycle is when the spring moves up and down or back and forth and comes back to its original position. So like I said, the spring moves up and back here. That's one cycle. The time it takes to do that is one period. And then there's the frequency. That's the number of cycles that the spring would complete in one second. And then there's the amplitude, capital A. That's the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. Generally, uh, positive is to the right or up and negative is down or to the left, just like on a math XY coordinate system, just like that. Okay, so you should be aware of those terms. We'll use those terms in this video. And there's going to be four things that we can look at and that we're going to look at with the simulation in this video. And one of those things is the amplitude. How far back do we pull the string or how far do we stretch the spring? The mass, what is the mass of the mass that's on the spring? There's the acceleration due to gravity G. And there's also the spring constant K. That's the spring constant for Hooke's law. Of course, there's a video I made for that. You can link to that in the upper right-hand corner. But let's go first to look at our first um, factor, which is going to be the amplitude. Now, when you open the simulation, it looks like this. Let's see if I can just uh, stretch this out all the way like this. And then you can see here is the mass, the spring constant, the spring strength. We have some things we're going to do over here. Here's gravity. There's a ruler and a timer. And I'm going to take this mass and I'm going to hang it on the spring like that. And I'm going to start off with uh, the mass at 5. I'm going to set the spring strength from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to have the spring strength at 5. We're going to leave the gravity. You can see we can change that like that. And then we're going to take our ruler so we can measure the amplitude, and we're going to take our timer so we can measure the time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this like this, and I'm going to set this at the height so I can see. And I'm going to check this period trace. It's really the only thing you need. And you'll see that tells you where the center of oscillation is or the equilibrium position, and then it'll show us the period trace so we can time. And I'm going to do each of these we're checking the amplitude, so we're going to start first with an amplitude of 20 centimeters like that. And you can see if I let this go, it goes back pretty quickly, back and forth. That's one cycle when it makes that kind of S shape. That's the period trace. And I could time that with the timer. It might be a little hard. So this simulation is really good. It has the thing right down here where I can just slow it down like that. So now I can measure the period like that. And you can see it goes down up and back to the center of oscillation. And you get, just like that, that the period of that spring with that mass, of that spring strength, with that gravity, and an amplitude of 20 centimeters, okay, is just about 0 0.75. It's 0 0.76. All right, now we can just check that one more time just to be sure. 
And we get a little familiar with using the timer. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it and you see we get basically the same value again. We could say that's 0, 0,76 just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. I'm going to stop this like that. And this time I'm going to do the same thing, leave all everything the same, except I'm going to do an oscillation of, excuse me, an amplitude of 40 centimeters. Now I'm going to show you one thing we can do also that's a little bit helpful. We can pause this and I can set this at 40 and then I can release it and it won't move until I tell it to play and then I'll play it and then I can time it right away like that and you can see that the period is the same. The period has not changed. Okay, you could check it one more time if you want to but uh, maybe we'll do one more just to be sure. But for the rest of them, we'll just do it one time. Once you get the hang of it, you see that the period is 0 0.75. So in both cases, whether we had an amplitude of 20 or an amplitude of 40, we had the same period. The time it takes to make one cycle did not change. So now I'm going to reset my timer. We'll do three different values for each one. So we did 20, 40, now we'll do 60. And we want to see, well... We should know now, if it didn't change with 40, um, it shouldn't change with 60, but let's just see. You can see it travels farther, but of course, there's more stretch, and once again, we're at 0, 074. So for the amplitude, whether it's 20, 40, or 60, the period was the same in all three cases. So we can go back to our presentation, and we can see we have amplitude here, and we would just put down here that the amplitude has no effect on the period. How far you pull the spring back, the period remains the same. Okay, that's a little bit counterintuitive, but that's the way it works out. Okay, all right, you pull it back farther, but there's more stretch, so there's more force, and it all equals out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to check the mass. So I'm going to start with a mass of... What are we going to start with? Let's start with a mass of 50 grams and pull this all the way down like that. I can set this. I can make this go to the like that. And I'm going to pause that. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to leave the gravity, the spring strength, and everything else the same, the other three variables. And in this case, when I'm testing the mass, I'm going to use always use a displacement of 40 centimeters. It doesn't matter what you use, but we just always use 40. And then we can release this, and we can time that. And you can see that that works out to be just about 0 0.5, 0 0.51, okay? So we can reset this. I'm going to now increase the mass to, let's just say, 150. So that's 100. You can see I changed the mass up here. It has the mass up here. I can uh, stop this. I can bring this down here like this, the ruler, and I have everything, and then I can uh, bring this down 40, like that. Oops, I wanna stop this first, so I can bring this down here 40, like that. And then I can, everything set up here, I can just release this, and then I can time it like that. Now you should notice, it looks like it's moving a little more slowly than it was before, we've already gone past 0.5. And therefore, you can see with 150 grams that the period is 0, 0,91. All right, so it increased from 50 to 150 grams. It went from 0.5 to basically 0.9. Now, let's just do one more. Reset the timer. We can stop this. We can set this. Let's just go all the way now to 250. Not all the way, but to 250. Like that. I can pause this again. I can pause this. I can set this back down here to zero. I can move this down to 40, just like that. And I can release this with 250. And you can see, boom, and now it looks like it's even traveling even more slowly. More mass, more inertia, harder to change the direction, the motion. And you can see now we're at basically 1.2. So in this case, the mass increased, as we increase the mass, then the period also increased from 0.5 to 0.9 to just about 1.2. So now we can go back to our presentation, and you can see we have the mass here, and because when we increase the mass,
the period decreased, okay? No, excuse me, when we increase the mass, the period also increased, so that means that those two things are directly proportional. If you increase the mass, the period also goes up, and if you could do that, we won't take the time to do it. If you decrease the mass, then the period would also decrease. So the mass and the period are directly proportional to each other. So next we're gonna do the acceleration due to gravity, and we're gonna go back to our presentation. I'm just gonna stop this, and for the acceleration due to gravity, now we can change the gravity over here. I'm going to have the um, mass always set at 150. Okay, we'll do the same thing where we uh, use the same displacement. I'm gonna set the gravity. Now, when the gravity, you don't have numbers, but I'm just gonna set it to close to zero, but uh, I'm gonna set the gravity there to low gravity, close to none. I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to freeze this. Pause that, I'm gonna reset this, and now I'm going to pull this back 40 again. I'm gonna use the same displacement, same amplitude. I can play this, and as that goes through the equilibrium, I can time it like that, and you will see that the period is just about 0 0.92, 0 0.9, and that's with a low gravity. Now what we can do is we can increase the gravity a little bit like this, Okay, and then uh, maybe move it a little bit closer here to the middle. We can pause this. We can move this. We can pause that. We can reset that. Pull this back down to 40. And we can let that go. And we can measure the period with a higher gravitational constant. And last time it was 0.9, and this time it's also 0.9. So when we went from low gravity to kind of middle gravity, the period didn't change. So let's just do one more to confirm that. Let's just increase the gravity a little more. Okay, we can now pause the spring. We can set this like this. We can pause that like that. We have the timer reset and we can pull this back again to 40 and we can release this and once again, we go like that and we time it and hopefully it will be very close to 0 0.9. There's a little bit of human error in the measurements, but once again, it's 0.91. So now we can go back to our presentation and you see in our presentation, we have here acceleration due to gravity and once again, it has no effect on the period. Okay, the acceleration due to gravity does not affect the period, just like the amplitude did not affect the period. Okay, we have one more. That's the spring constant. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna put the spring constant, I think I'm gonna start with the spring constant of two. This is one, this is two, and I'm gonna set the mass at 150 grams like that. I'm gonna set the gravity to the Earth's gravity. So I'm gonna start with Earth, not start with, but leave it at Earth's gravity like that. And we're going to be checking the spring constant. So we're gonna change the spring constant. We leave the mass, the gravity, and once again, we'll pause that, reset this, and we'll use displacement of 40. Okay, play, start, and we have that, and it's moving somewhat slowly. And we can stop it right when it comes through the center again, and it's 1.22. Okay, now we can change the spring constant. I think I started with two, and then we're gonna to go to six. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six. We can pause that. We're gonna leave the mass the same. Move our ruler, pause that, reset the timer, pull this back to 40, and we have a higher spring constant. Okay, well, last time it was 1.2, and this time the period is going to be looks like it's going to be a little less. This time it's 0.87, so it actually decreased. We increased the spring constant, okay, the spring strength, and we decreased the period. Now let's do one more. We can pause this like this. We're going to take the spring constant. Why don't we do it all the way up to 10? Pause our spring, set the ruler, reset this, uh, pause that, go back to 40 centimeters, and we can release this, and we can release the timer.
start the timer. And it looks like it's moving more quickly, and this time it's 0.7. So we went from 1.2 to 0.87 to 0.7 like that. So you can see as we increase the spring constant, the period decreased. Okay, you have a stiffer spring, it's pulling harder, it's going to decrease the period. So we can go back to our presentation now again, and we can say that the spring constant is inversely proportional to the period. That means when we increase the spring constant, the period went down, and when we, if we were to decrease the spring constant, then the period would go up. So those four things, no effect from the amplitude, no effect from gravity, directly proportional to the mass, and inversely proportional to the period, which we can summarize that here by saying that the mass is directly proportional to the period, the period is directly proportional to the mass, and that the period is inversely proportional to the spring constant, and we can put those two together to say that the period is directly proportional to the mass. It's on the top of this fraction. Increase the mass, increase the period. If you divide by a bigger number, that's why it's inversely proportional. Then if you divide by a bigger spring constant, then you're going to get a shorter period. Now, the actual equation that we use to calculate the period of the spring looks officially like this. It's the period is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of m over k. But you still here see we have m over k directly proportional to m, inversely proportional to k. And that is the equation that you use to calculate an oscillating spring, whether it's vertical or a horizontal spring like that. Okay? I think that uh, simulation is really good. It shows that really nicely. You can measure that pretty easily. Let's do one simple problem where we're actually going to calculate the period. We have a question here. It says that what is the period and frequency of a spring? The spring constant is k equals 400 newtons per meter. And it has, we have a mass on the spring that has a mass of 2.5 kilograms. And we want to know uh, what is the period and what is the frequency. So here is our equation for the period. We're simply going to plug those values in. The period t is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of 2.5, which is the mass. And the spring constant was 400 newtons per meter. And if we do that, I like to do this little uh, fishing step here. You get 2 times pi times the square root. If you take 2.5 divided by 400, you get 6.2 times 10 to the minus third. And that means the period is going to be half a second. It's going to take half a second for the spring to go out and back to the same location. The frequency and the period are inversely proportional to each other, so the frequency is 1 over t. And that means that the frequency is going to be 1 divided by 0 0.5. And that means that the frequency is 2. And that means that that spring would complete two cycles in one second. That should make sense. If each cycle takes a second, the time for one cycle is, uh, the period is half a second. It's going to do two of those, okay, two cycles in a second. Because hertz is frequency, and that's cycles per second. Okay, there you go. I think that was a nice, ambitious video. We went through and used that PHET simulation, excellent simulation, to determine how the mass, the amplitude, the acceleration due to gravity, and the spring constant affect the period. It's only the mass and the spring constant. And then we did a simple problem like that. Okay, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all the following five things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up, support my channel, give me a comment, leave me a nice positive comment, and don't forget sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends, show them just how much you care. Thank you so much, so much. I really mean it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.